I'd like to illustrate here how we go about applying glass fabric to a plywood or a timber structured hull or in fact a, a deck. Glass fabric is a very, very powerful reinforcement material for our epoxy coating. It may even be called for within the design of a small kit or a small set of plans that are all available now uh, from a wide variety of designers. Applying glass cloth uses fairly basic materials, fairly basic tools. It's very, very simple, but it's a, it's a process that does tend to confuse some people if you've never done it before. So what I want to do is demonstrate on this small piece of plywood some of the basic techniques that might help in applying our glass fabric. Now I'm going to use our epoxy resin, our resin and hardener here. I've got my glass fabric. I've got two different types of glass material here a biaxial fabric and I've also got a woven fabric here and what I want to illustrate is how you apply both types of fabric. The techniques are exactly the same but perhaps some of the feel and feedback of applying these are just subtly different. I've also got my mixing pots, my mixing sticks, a roller tray, a nice little three inch foam roller and a roller sleeve. These sleeves are um, are specifically for working with epoxy. You'll see that the foam here is only three millimetres thick. That holds sufficient epoxy to work with, but not too great a quantity so that it starts to cure on the roller itself. Very, very important. Of course, I've got my own personal protection equipment. I'm wearing nice long sleeves to avoid skin contact. I've got some nitrile gloves and I've got my eye protection as well. Now before I mix up any, any epoxy, there are two methods of applying glass fabric. One we call the dry method, and that is to say that you apply the glass cloth to the surface whilst the surface is dry. The advantage of this is that it gives you an opportunity to move the fabric around and align all the fibres. Now typically, this is the kind of technique that you might use on a cedar strip Canadian canoe because you want really, really good aesthetics from the fibre and it gives you a chance to slide the fibres around while everything is dry and align the fabric. The difficulty with that is then applying the epoxy through the glass in an attempt to wet the glass out and also into the timber and uh, attempting to wet the wood out. This actually is a very, very difficult operation and requires a little bit of practice. So, if you are contemplating sheathing a Canadian canoe, practice first with a small amount of wood and a small amount of glass fabric. Always a top tip. It, it will provide you with really good technique for very, very little expense. What I want to illustrate on this board is the method that we call the wet method of sheathing. And that is to say, I'm going to apply a coat of epoxy onto the surface here, leave that to tack slightly, then I'm going to apply my glass fabric and wet that out. Now that's almost like a two-step bonding process, wetting out the surface, then applying the glass cloth. That ensures that during the course of the curing process, the wood doesn't starve the glass of any of the epoxy. Very important. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, meter out using the, uh, the pumps. Uh, I think for this job I'm going to use four pumps of resin and four pumps of hardener. Second pump of resin, second pump of hardener, third pump of resin, third pump of hardener, and then my final fourth pump of resin. I'm going to use one of our plastic reusable mixing sticks to blend the two together and I'm going to spend two minutes blending the resin together with the hardener. I've now been mixing this for two minutes and I've got a nice homogeneous mix. So I'm going to dispense that now into my roller tray. 
making sure I've loaded the roller up with my epoxy and then applying it to the surface. This makes life so much easier. You can really distribute this very, very nice and evenly. just making sure that I make a final pass with my roller just to distribute the epoxy nice and evenly. These rollers are available in a wider width for larger surface areas but you can see how quickly and how evenly I've distributed the epoxy. This is really important because if you flooded areas of the surface with excess epoxy then when you apply the glass it will have a tendency to float on those areas. Also, a thicker coating will cause a subtle exothermic reaction. That's to say that the coating will heat up very, very slightly. What that can do is expand the air within the wood fibre and you can get air bubbles popping out of the surface. So it's very important to get a nice, thin, evenly distributed coat. Now I'm going to leave this for about 18 to 20 minutes just to become sticky and then I'm going to add my glass fabric and then I'll be wetting that out with more epoxy. Now here I am around about 18 to 20 minutes later and I've got a surface on my epoxy that's around about as sticky as masking tape. That's the perfect moment to go on with our glass sheathing when we're using this wet method of sheathing. Now for my woven fabric because it's slightly unstable, the weave of this is slightly asymmetrical, so it will drape over 3D surfaces very nicely. I've put this onto a cardboard tube, and that will make life a little bit easier for me to apply this. So I'm going to apply this to the sticky epoxy. And I'm just going to unwind the roll on the surface and allow the lovely tacky qualities of the epoxy to do their work. You can see with my gloves on I can just smooth this out to the edges, just get the glass cloth established on the surface. You see how that stayed there quite nicely. You can see on this cloth, it has what we call a feathered edge. The weight of the edge is around about half the weight of the center of the roll of the fabric. This means if you get an overlap here, you're actually generating the same weight as the fabric here, rather than doubling the weight if you were to overlap it as a standard fabric. This fabric is a really, really nice, high quality glass fabric. So now I'm ready to mix some more epoxy and I'm going to meter out five pumps of resin and five pumps of hardener to work with here. Now although I'm using five pumps of resin and five pumps of hardener, I would recommend that until you get quite proficient at this, you work with smaller quantities. I'm doing this because I want to illustrate how easy and um, uncomplicated this process is, but it does require a little bit of thought and a little bit of concentration. So I'm going to spend two minutes making sure that I've blended the resin and hardener together. So I've been mixing for two minutes now and I've made a nice homogeneous blend of the resin and hardener. Dispense that into my roller tray. That will give me more working time. The working time of, a, of four pumps of resin and four pumps of hardener with the standard hardener 
in a mixing pot is around about 20 minutes. In a roller tray, I can extend that time to nearly double that working time because I've spread the volume over a broader surface area. I'm now going to load the foam roller up with epoxy and I'm going to apply that to my glass cloth. Now, this will wet out fairly quickly, but, but all I'm going to concentrate on, first of all, is to distribute the epoxy over the surface of the glass fabric. One advantage to using the foam roller is it's quite speedy, so you get good working times here. Now I'm nearly running out of epoxy in my roller tray, but that's not going to stop me mixing some more up. So once again, wet out my roller and distribute some more epoxy onto my work. So I'm not using too vigorous an action, so I'm trying to stay very clean, keep everything nice and clean. Now I can come back and do some detail work and try and consolidate the glass with my roller and distribute the epoxy all over the surface of my work. Make sure everything's wet out thoroughly. You can see how everything's gone nice and transparent. And now I've got no air bubbles under the glass cloth. The action of the roller is driving those out. And you can see now I've got the glass cloth thoroughly wet out and I've consolidated it and I've got no air bubbles or dry spots so that the glass is floating. What I'd like to do now is illustrate another type of fabric that we have that also is called for in, in boat designs. This is a more substantial, more structural fabric. And what I'd like to do is il illustrate how this wets out just as easily with exactly the same techniques, but I'd like to apply that straight over this glass cloth. Some designs do call for multiple layers of glass, and very often the larger sized uh, boat builds will require a biaxial glass. So I'm just going to apply that against the wet epoxy. Just get that to, to stick. Just get that to stick by wetting it out with some more epoxy. And you can see here, this is a heavier fabric and consequently takes a little bit more epoxy to wet it out. Now I'm going to add another four pumps of resin and four pumps of hardener. Again, I'm going to make sure that I mix this for two minutes, ensuring that there's a thorough blend of resin and hardener. And I'm going to dispense my mixed epoxy into the same roller tray. So bear in mind I'm using this all the way through this process. It's all too easy to use a lot of these disposable tools and end up throwing quite a lot of waste into the rubbish bin which isn't such a good practice. I'm really letting the epoxy do my work here for me, letting the wetting characteristics of the epoxy really impregnate the fibres, making sure I've removed any air bubbles. You can do that with short movements of the roller. You can see that because this is a heavier fabric, it just takes a little bit more work to make sure that you have a perfect surface finish. You can see here I've distributed the epoxy evenly over the surface. I haven't actually got any um, epoxy rich areas such as this, which I can then just distribute with my foam roller very, very nicely. 
and I've got a nice, even, evenly distributed epoxy coating. I can see some texture of the fibres, which is what I want to see, because from here I've got a couple of options as to how I finish this. Firstly, if I leave this surface as it is, as a sheathing, then almost, almost without fail I'm going to have to sand this to then provide another epoxy coating or a, a paint finish or any subsequent process, either another bulkhead or another fixture bonded in here, I'm going to have to sand this. Now if I sand it, I will actually cut through some of the surface fibres, which really makes it a complete waste of time to add glass fabric. So what I want to do is do a secondary process here that, um, that means when I come to sand, I'm not sanding into the fibres. Now, for a clear finish where I'm using glass fabric, and it's quite conceivable to use glass fabric with good clear finishes, I would want to allow this to become sticky as masking tape with a surface tack on it. Then I'd add another coat of my epoxy. Then I'd leave that to become sticky and I'd possibly add another coat, just enough to fill the texture of the woven cloth and give me a surface in which I can sand with 80 grit sandpaper for another epoxy coating, but one that will not cut through the, uh, through the, the glass fabric by the action of, of sanding. With my biaxial fabric, this tends to be for more structural work and it tends to be underneath surfaces that are painted. I've got a couple of options. I could add more of my epoxy mix to fill the texture of the, the glass fabric here. Or better still, I can use my faithful friend peel ply fabric and I can apply that over my um, glass sheathed surface. This will give me a fantastic finish better than sanding, totally graded, so that it's, as, it's a, a, a very, very nice textured surface. And very importantly, any amine blush will occur on the surface of the peel ply. If you want to know more about amine blush, then do consult our technical manuals or look at, at further videos regarding amine blush. I'm just gonna get that established on the wet epoxy and make sure that that's totally wet out and I can add a little bit more epoxy from my foam roller. See, I'm not rushing here, it's quite a relaxed process. And so it's at this moment that I can use a plastic squeegee to further consolidate my peel ply against the surface of my sheathed part. This will make your work look so professional and it's so inexpensive peel ply. It leaves a totally graded finish which is fantastic for another process be it either another coat of epoxy or a coat of paint or a secondary bonding, bringing a, in a bulkhead or bringing in further structure to a, a, a surface that's already coated with epoxy. It's important that I just make sure that this is nicely wet out and I can finish this off with my plastic squeegee. And you can see here, there's absolutely no problem in applying just a little bit more epoxy over the peel ply, just to ensure that it's all wet out. Because if it's not in contact with the wet surface underneath, it won't function and do its job. Because it won't leave an impression of the texture of the fabric in the wet epoxy. Now this will work fantastically on a boat that's having a new deck put on it. If you were fitting a new plywood deck, it would be really, really good practice to sheathe the deck 
with a glass fabric. Now, of course, once you've done that, you're likely to want to walk all over it, maybe for six months, maybe for another year. And it's quite feasible to leave the peel ply on for that period of time and then rip it away once you're ready to maybe fit a teak deck or you're ready to paint the decks. Underneath that, when you rip the peel ply away, will be pristine, ready to bond to surface that is epoxy coated or epoxy and glass coated. Peel ply is a fantastic material to use in conjunction with epoxy, either with an epoxy coating or with a glass sheath coating or with filler. It's, it's a fundamental part of working with epoxy. Filling and fairing a surface is all about making a rough surface become smooth with an easy to sand and very, very stable filled mix of epoxy. Now here is our other option to using peel ply. We've got a heavily textured surface here, which it will be highly desirable to fill before we paint over the surface in the, in the efforts to fill the texture of the weave of the glass fabric or glass cloth. The idea behind that is that by filling the weave, when we come to sand, we don't cut through any of these really, really strong glass fibres. Now the ideal filler to do that, or one of the ideal fillers to do that, is the 407 low density filler. There are three low density fillers in the West System product range of fillers. There's the 407, there's the 409 and the 410. The 410 microlite filler is the easiest to stand. In fact, it's almost like um, the same density as cedar to sand. Very, very easy to sand, but not recommended under dark painted colours because it lacks just a little bit of heat stability. The 407 low density filler is, uh, is a fantastic stable filler that is also fairly easy to sand. The density of this is very similar to mahogany, uh, so it does represent an easier to sand surface than just an epoxy coating, which is very, very tough to sand. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to meter out three pumps of resin and three pumps of hardener. I'm just using the standard hardener here, the 205 hardener, and uh, then I'm going to mix up some of the low density filler. And I want to show you exactly the kind of consistency that we're looking for, for the filler to be applied nice and seamlessly and efficiently. The first step is to prime, make sure the pumps are primed. So I just do that by making sure there's some resistance behind the pump and waiting for a small amount of epoxy resin to come out of the resin pump and a small amount of hardener to come out of the hardener pump. I discard that mixing pot and I use a fresh mixing pot. Uh, I'm going to meter out one pump of resin, one pump of hardener, another pump of resin, another pump of hardener, another pump of resin, finally my third pump of hardener. And I'm going to blend the two together with this nice hardwood mixing stick. This will help me blend the filler into the mixed epoxy rather than a smaller mixing stick which tends to bend. And I'm going to spend two minutes mixing the resin and hardener together. And my resin and hardener mix is a nice homogeneous blend. And I can see that that's true. I've made sure I've mixed around the corners of the mixing pot. Now I'm going to add my low density filler. Now for each pump of resin, we need approximately two scoops of the low density filler. Now this appears to be quite a lot of filler. So for this, I'll need six scoops. And if you look at that, this is around about twice the volume of filler to the mixed epoxy. This should give me close to a peanut butter consistency, which is the kind of consistency that I want to stay on this vertical surface and be very easy to sand. Now this will take quite a bit of blending together. It's a good idea to carefully blend the filler with the epoxy 
and very, very suddenly you feel the two start to blend together and you end up with a nice <coughs> mix that you can really work on and get it really nice and smooth. This is why you need a sturdy mixing stick to do this. Spend some time blending the two together. And the real clue to the right consistency is whether this mix will be stable on your vertical mixing stick. Now this isn't slumping, so consequently this won't slump on the work and that's exactly what we want. I can use my mixing stick now to apply that to the work. One thing to mention is that the surface of my sheath part here is as sticky as masking tape. That's the perfect point at which to apply this filled coating. If it's really, really wet, what will happen is you'll disturb the weave of the glass as you're trying to apply the filled mix. The whole idea is to smooth this surface out and remove the texture of the woven and the biaxial fabric with the filler. So I'm just going to spread this around. Notice I'm not trying to overfill this and lose the level. I'm just trying to really apply a nice, even, thin skim of the filled epoxy. And I can use my other squeegee, rather like a plasterer would. I'm using the squeegee at a certain angle. This helps in breaking air bubbles. I can also draw it at this angle and this angle, which helps give me a really nice level surface. The last thing you want to be doing here is just simply overfilling this only to spend ages of time sanding back to a level, sanding off filled epoxy, getting dust on the floor. The best policy is to get a nice level surface before the epoxy gels. And you can see there, we've got very little epoxy left. We've got some epoxy left in the mixing pot, but we've got most of our surface uh, filled with epoxy. So I think this is a really good example of how to do it. These are all best practices, and this will achieve very, very good results if you watch this application video.